Cryptosporidia is a parasite that's a quite a common cause of, of calf diarrhea and can be a big problem in, in dairy herds. The main clinical sign associated with Cryptosporidia is diarrhea and these calves can go on to become quite dehydrated so they'll have sunken eyes um, and they can be lethargic and sometimes look like they have abdominal pain as well and the dehydration can lead to the death of the calf as well. How severely calves will be affected and how likely they are to be affected depends on the health status of the calf. So calves that are kept at the right temperature and are well fed with a, a well functioning gut and no other diseases are more likely to be able to fight off the cryptosporidia and for it to have a lower impact on their health and their growth rates. So you can hand a faecal sample in um, to your, your vet or the local laboratory and they'll do a smear um, and stain it and look for the, the eucysts. In terms of treatment of cryptosporidia, fluid therapy is, is really the most important part of it. And the aim of treatment is to keep these calves alive, to keep them healthy and to keep them growing. Uh, start fluid therapy, that might be oral fluids if the diarrhea is quite mild and the calves are, are bright and well in themselves, or if the diarrhea is severe, if they've got sunken eyes and they're quite dull, then contacting your vet for uh, intravenous fluid therapy is, is advisable as well. Colostrum management and hygiene in the calf shed are absolutely crucial to the prevention of cryptosporidia in calves and to minimise the spread of the disease. When it comes to colostrum management, we must remember the three cues, quality, quantity and quickly. So quality of colostrum can be measured using either a Brix refractometer or a colostrometer. This is to check the antibody or immunoglobulin content in the colostrum to make sure it's at a suitably high level to provide good immunity to the calves. And the target is over 50 grams of immunoglobulins per litre. The quantity of colostrum. The aim is to get 10% of birth weight into the calf. So a 40 kilo calf should require four litres of colostrum. And quickly, it's important to get colostrum into the calf as soon as possible after birth because the absorption of immunoglobulins declines over time. Calves should always be well fed to maintain their energy intake, especially in cold weather. Any nutritional stresses or an energy deficiency can make them more susceptible to infection, but also increase the severity of symptoms with cryptosporidia. Always feed healthy calves first and sick calves last to minimize the disease spread. Only certain disinfectants are licensed for use against cryptosporidia and many commonly used farm disinfectants might not be effective. So always follow manufacturer's guidance on product usage. Always make sure you have a disinfectant foot bath outside the calf shed for workers to use on entry and on exit. If using calf jackets, make sure to wash them at a high temperature between use. So ideally at temperatures over 60 degrees Celsius. Only temperatures over 60 degrees Celsius will kill Cryptosporidia eggs. So disinfection of calf pens is also a really critical step in the prevention of this disease. This applies to individual calf pens and hutches, as well as group pens. And when it comes to group housing of calves, it's best if possible to operate a batch all in, all out system. Disinfectants will work best after steam cleaning to get rid of any dirt. When it comes to grouping calves, then try to keep older calves housed separately from younger calves because older calves may still be infected even if they're not showing any clinical signs. And when it comes to grouping calves, try and ensure that there is no more than 14 days spread between calves within a group. Any sick animal should be isolated as soon as possible and they should also remain isolated for at least one week after scouring has stopped because these calves can still shed the Cryptosporidia eggs for a few days after they appear to have recovered. For more information on colostrum management and calf health, visit the Farm Advisory Service website.